scripture memory verse tonight, Matthew 24, 4, and Jesus answered them and said, Take heed that no one deceives you. Matthew 24, 4. Anybody else? That's the memory verse. First one of the year. We've had several weeks to memorize it. Anybody else? Jack? Good job. And what we want to do is we want to always say the address, Matthew 24, 4, then say the scripture, then say the address again. And just because uh, I know when I was first born again and we started memorizing scripture, I know a lot of them that I don't know the address. So we began to say the addresses so that we know where they're at in the Bible. And we memorize scripture to wash our mind. Our mind, see, has been filled with the world. It's been filled with sin. It's been filled with all kinds of ideas. And it kind of goes along with this scripture. See, we've been taught lies because the whole world is earning to sway of the wicked one, the devil, the father of lies. And so we've been trained and told things that just simply aren't true. And he keeps us following this dangling carrot. He keeps us following lies. And the only thing that can keep us from being deceived is to learn truth. See, you can follow a lie for a long time and not even know it. You can live a lie. You can be a lie. But when you know truth, you, you have nowhere else you have to go. You are on a solid rock. Does anybody else, has anybody else memorized the scripture would like to quote it? Again, we do this because we need to share scripture when we're in the street. And the best way to learn to share scripture is to learn to say it in front of people who love you. And that's why we do this. I've been doing this for 23 years where we give people scriptures to memorize and then give you an opportunity to say it out loud in front of other people. And that way when you go into the streets and somebody asks you, well, what are you doing? You can always tell them. You can tell them about Christ because when they get confronted with truth, that's what gives their conscience a chance to live the life right for truth and not to keep following a lie. I mean, the world cannot help us. The world's wisdom cannot help us. It can only be like the devil pouring gasoline on our fire. Only the truth will put out your fire, so to speak. Only the truth is going to stop your house from burning down and going to hell. Only truth will keep you from continuing to do what you've always done. There's no other way to change your life. Only with the truth of this word will your life change. Finley? Good job, family. Anybody else? Good job. Anybody else? Good job. Good to hear your voice. Again, look, look, why did Jesus answer them? Because they asked him a question. Okay, so you have to see sometimes the context, and I won't spend long on this because we just went through this in Matthew, or excuse me, Mark 13. You can look at that lesson if you'd like to see what's going on here. But he actually he's sitting there with them, and they're looking and going, Jesus, it's his disciples. Look at these magnificent buildings around here. And they're looking at the temple. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth, that not one stone will be left on top of another. And so they're obviously wanting to know why. Their entire life is around the temple there in Jerusalem. Everything that they've ever known since they were born is around that temple. And this might be something that's interesting to you. Our entire lives are around the American dream. Our entire life is around what America stands for. And right now, there's such a crazy chaos going on in America. And you know what the American people think? That this is all about us. We're so prideful in America that we think everything that's going on in the White House 
and, and, and switching the presidency is about us. It's not. It's about the whole world. This is a demonic war that's going on with one world government coming in and taking over to the whole planet because everything that happens in our White House decides what happens on this planet. Because for God has blessed this nation and made it that the greatest nation ever that, was, that, that has been birthed other than possibly the exception of Israel. And so we know that it's lasted longer than any other nation but at the heart of this is the devil. He's bringing in one world government. God is allowing it. Make no mistake, God is still has dominion over everything. God is still sovereign over the affairs of men. And he is allowing what is going on to go on. But we need to understand from the word of God what is going on. And take heed, beware is what it could be translated that no man, King James says man, no one deceives you. And it really means not a man, not an object, not a person, not even yourself. Self-deception is the worst thing possible. You know what happened to the nation of Israel? They were self-deceived. They had a religious institution. They said, we know God. Our forefathers worshiped God. They met him in the, in the wilderness. Moses gave us the law. They were so proud of their heritage that they forgot the God who gave them the heritage. And that's what's going on in America. We forget the God who made us a great country. If you watch the inauguration, you watched a bunch of lies. You watched a people acting like they, they loved God. They sang America the Beautiful. They even sang Amazing Grace as they lied. After stealing an election, after being evil, after calling for unity, the, the man that we swore in, Joe Biden, who is our president, and I prayed for him this morning, he gets up and signs 17 executive orders, everyone designed to destroy America and to hate God. Every one of them. You cannot get up and sign an executive order that men can go into to women's sports or women's bathrooms. You cannot get up and sign executive orders that you can kill babies and think that you're not spitting in the face of God. You can't get up and sign executive orders like that and think that you're going to have unity in a nation where the church is against that type of thing because of God's word. We didn't make it up. God said God said, it's his word. And then he'll mouth those words. And listen to me, you need to understand one thing that's very clear. Talk is cheap is how they say it in the street. Talk is cheap. And, and when a man says he's going to do something and he does the exact opposite, you know he's a liar. You know he's from the devil. But I would rather see a person do the right thing and not speak exactly perfectly than to see somebody say all the right words and walk away and do everything opposite of what he said. And that's what you're going to get when you get the devil putting people into office. You're going to get a lie. You're going to get pretense. You're going to get falseness. And any man that ever is in the presidency is a sinner. Some are just worse and they're being led by the devil. We need to understand that because the only way for us not to be deceived, that's what he said, take heed. They're talking about huge things in their lives, and when's it going to happen? What's the date, Jesus? You know what the question really was? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? That was their question. The sign. You know what Jesus already told the, the ruling authorities, the religious people? He said, an evil and perverse generation seeks after a sign, and none will be given except for the prophet Jonah, who was three days in the belly of a well. He was referring to his own death, burial, and resurrection when he would die and raise again. If we're not to look for signs. Signs will deceive you. When you start going, okay, if a red car goes by, I am going to do this, you're looking for a sign. We need to look for truth. We need to look for what is God's heart? What is God saying in his word? What is God calling us to do? Listen, we need to wake up and stop looking for signs, stop looking for dates, and begin to look for Jesus. That's the only thing that will keep you from being deceived, is looking for Jesus. What did he say? Every other way is deception. Every other way. 
only Jesus is the only name by which men can be saved from this crooked and perverse generation. All the rest of it, God has given the devil permission to set it up to deceive you. Even the schools, the higher learning, look at them. They're teaching there is no God. They're teaching that there's more than two genders. They're teaching that, uh, that, that you can kill babies. They're teaching that you can sin and do whatever you want and there's no consequence. They're teaching that, that, that we were uh, 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 evolution. And then they go, why is that person killing that person and that person? Like, because, you know, in the animal kingdom, the strong survives. So if you teach them that there's no God, there's no future, there's not going to be any punishment, you teach them that whoever is the strongest is in power, then what are they going to do? They're going to do whatever they want to do. There's no, there's no reason not to. Where's the standard? Who's going to stop me from killing everybody if there's no God that's going to judge me? See, when you stand on a lie, don't be surprised when you don't end up with death. That's why you have the killing of marriage, the killing of babies. You have the killing of society. You have the killing of the church. You have the killing of even truth. You have the killing of everything going on in our society because they're worshiping the devil. So now it, we live like anybody's truth is okay. But really, we know that truth is a person. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so we, it would it would behoove us to learn what he says life is about it would be something that we should put on our uh, most important list of things to do today is spend time with God and find out what he said about the things of life not what man says because they're underneath the sway of the wicked one trying to deceive us take heed that no one deceives you will it be easy no in fact, next week, our scripture memory verse, Matthew 10, 16. I'll give you a little bit of encouragement here. Matthew 10, 16 is next week's memory verse. Look at this. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples. Look what he says. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. What? What? Listen, Jesus knows that we can be deceived. He knows that we can be led around with a lie. He knows that our flesh is weak. But he also knows that his truth is real and he's real. And his spirit will lead us into all truth. And he sends these disciples out just like he sends you and me as sheep in the midst of wolves. And he doesn't tell us carry a big gun or a big stick. He says, therefore... Be wise as a serpent and harmless as doves. That's pretty amazing. So write this down. Look at it all week long till next week. And we'll go over it a little bit and see what it might mean. Because God wants us to wake up to truth. Matthew 10, 16. We're always referred to as sheep. You know why? Because sheep sheep are dumb. This is a good lesson for you. It's great for your self-esteem. Sheep are dumb. They go behind the barn. They can't see. And they go, bah, I'm lost. And they're standing in the same yard they started in. And God compares us to sheep on purpose because if we're left to our own devices, we do dumb stuff. And, and, and you don't need to say Amen. But when we're left to ourselves, we do some dumb stuff. The Bible tells us that sin kills us. It leads to death. And you know what we do as soon as we get a chance? We sin. We do dumb stuff. We do stuff we know is wrong on purpose. And then we go, I'm, I'm smart. I'm okay. No. No. We need the Spirit of God to lead us to the truth of God so that we're not deceived into thinking we're okay when we're not okay. But the world, you know what they do? They go, well, we need to come up with this psychology so we can teach people self-esteem so they will teach, say that they're good. People have too much self-esteem. People think too much of themselves. That's the problem. We need to understand that we're sinners that are born out of the pride of the devil. 
were born with that type of a, who wanted to be God. And so I pray that you, you will wake up, that I will wake up, that God will show us them areas where the devil has deceived us, and we will begin to spend time in the word, prayer, and fellowship, and to talk to God about it, and let him show us that we need his strength, we need his power, we need his might, we need to be crucified with him, and in the grave, and, and let him live through us, or we will be deceived. Do you know how many people are already in the grave that were deceived? They deceived. They think they're okay. They're living their life, and then they die, and they get to the throne room, and they find out they were totally deceived, and that it wasn't whoever gets the most toys wins. It wasn't that you're going to get to heaven and you get away on a balance of whether I'm good or bad, or whether I'm as good, or, or maybe I'm not as bad as Jeffrey Dahmer or Adolf Hitler. Nothing to do with it. The only answer to the question is Jesus Christ. The only way to get into heaven is Jesus Christ. His blood, His sacrifice, because the standard is perfection, and He lived a perfect life, and He gives us freely that gift. If we will believe it in our heart and confess it with our mouth, we shall be saved. However, you can be saved, and I say it like another person said it. I stole this. You can have a saved soul and a lost life. You can believe in Jesus Christ and then be deceived into following the wrong things and never allowing the Holy Spirit to use your life for God's glory. So beware lest any man deceive you. Take heed. Very important. We are sheep in the midst of wolves. And we need to be wise as serpent and gentle as doves. Amen? Write that down.